Welcome. I thought I'd take a second to talk about quadratic functions and just their basic form and a couple little vocabulary things. Nothing too serious. Uh, when we talk about quadratic functions, we're talking about something where we have sort of a y equals x squared relationship. Usually before you get here, you cover uh, the y equals x or a linear relationship where I make like a nice pretty line just like I did here. Now, in this case, I have a basic what we refer to as a parent function. So this is a, it would help if I turn the pen on, I'm sure. Um, this is called a parent function. A parent function is the most basic form of a general equation or a general function. So if you don't have anything fancy added to it, a number, or it's not doing, you know, uh, I don't have minus anything or parentheses, just the most basic simple form, y equals x, then you have what's referred to as a parent function. Now, in my y equals x format, it's pretty easy to determine what the matching x's and y's are because they're exactly the same. So when I have an x value of negative 2, per, let's say, I want a, I'm going to switch colors here, um, I'm going to have negative 2, which makes sense because it's going to end up being like right in this general vicinity here. When it's negative 1, if I just plug in negative 1 here, well, it has to be the same thing, so it's negative 1, so I get this dot. I'll get this one, I'll get something like this, and then I'll get something, you know, kind of in that general placing. Zero. When I plug in one, I get one. When I plug in one, I get two. Now, when we add another level of complexity to it by saying, okay, y equals x squared, I'm looking at something uh, considerably different. So let's test out a couple things. We'll try negative two as our starting point for this experiment. And make sure that when you do this kind of experimentation, if you're doing a negative, if you calculate or everything, you want to make sure that you put that negative 2 in parentheses before you square it. Otherwise, if you type in negative 2 squared, the calculator is going to follow order of operations, which say to square the 2 and then multiply by that negative in the front. So you'll end up with the wrong answer. The answer should be what the same thing as negative 2 times negative 2, which is, of course, 4. It seems like a simple, meaningless thing to tell you, but it, people do it a lot. Just be aware. If I do negative 1 times negative 1, of course, I get 1. 0 gives me 0. Well, 1 squared is 1 also, and 2 squared is 4. So you'll notice there's no negative values at all. This kind of stops right on the origin, which is a good thing. Most parent functions go through the origin. Let's look at the graph and see if we can uh, get a better idea of what's going on. Here is the uh, y equals x squared graph, the most general and basic form of it anyway. So are the overall look of this is significantly different than the look of a uh, y equals x situation because, number one, it's not a line. You'll notice the gigantic jumps from 0 uh, up to 4 here. So it goes from 0 to 1. That's pretty normal. That's linear. Uh, but it has to curve enough so it can start shooting its way up here because it, uh, it goes from 1 uh, 1, 1 all the way up to uh, 2, 4. And then when you go to 3, 9, and you know when you get to 7, you're up at 49. This graph is huge. It shoots up a lot. That's just the nature of an x squared. So uh, we'll call this general form a parabola. So when you hear the word parabola, you know they're talking about that U shape that extends very quickly from uh, what's almost a linear relationship between 1 and 0 all the way up to um, you know, really big numbers very quickly. You also notice that there's no negative values in the parent function. It doesn't go down here below the x-axis. It just kind of stays up here, and it's because it's squared, you know, that whole thing. Another nice feature is the fact that it's almost as if you could take a point here and just fold it right on top of this one. And if you think about it a little more, all of the points will fall right on top. So you have this if you were doing it on paper, you'd have this little place that you could fold the paper and lay one part on top of the other. We refer to that idea as symmetry. You've probably heard that term before. Uh, in a parabola sense, we refer to that line as an axis of symmetry, which you would in symmetry anyway. But on a parent function for a parabola, or y equals x squared, the axis of symmetry is x equals 0. And that's an important feature because it helps me describe wh what the graph looks like even if I can't see the graph and I just have the numbers. There's a couple different forms of um, quadratics. There's standard form, vertex form. Uh, I'll cover those in other videos, but I just thought this one would be better just to give you a, a brief look at what it looks like. Uh, the next thing that might be of interest is the idea of the vertex. The vertex is like the little point right here. It's sort of where the two lines converge together. And in the parent function, the vertex's value is 0 and 0. So the origin, as it should be. Um, 
the vertex is such an important feature of the parabola that there's an entire form dedicated to vertex form. So uh, I'll probably end up making one a, a video on it. And also, there's millions of them about the vertex form. Anywho, let's look at the maximum and minimum values. Now, when we did domain and range of the uh, y equals x form, the domain, the left to right movement, would go on forever. So it's all real numbers. And same thing with the range. It goes up or down forever. In a uh, y equals x squared situation, especially in the parent function, that's not the case. Now, from a domain perspective, the left to right, yeah, you'll continue to move uh, left to right forever. So the domain value is still still all real numbers in this situation. On the other hand, my um, range value is limited by the fact that it's only um, sort of going in this direction. So what I'm ending uh, end up with is my range value of x greater than or equal or y greater than or equal to zero. It can't be any lower because of the fact that I'm locking it in with that squared term. So the maximum and minimum value idea pops into play. As long as my um, parabola faces up like it does right now, I have what's referred to as a minimum value. So right there. That's the smallest value in my parabola. Uh, and that's as far down as it's going to go. If the parabola was, say, going the opposite way, I would have a maximum value. So right here would be my maximum value. And there's ways that we can sort of figure those things out. But as a general, look and overview of everything. There's the basics of y equals x squared. So you know what the parabola looks like. You've heard some of the terms. Um, so you can move forward into translations and, you know, that sort of stuff. So I hope this helps.